What's up, lifelong learners? It's your boy, Mr. Hang, with another tutorial. And this is going to be a lot about the selection tool because this next series of video is specifically for creating thumbnails. And I'm going to teach you the tools to be able to create your thumbnails along with all the other tools that you learned before from creating the business logo. So here we go. All right, so what are we learning today? How to use selection tools on photop.com? Why are we learning it? To understand how to cut and paste unwanted parts of an image or fill in a color based on the selection. How do we know we learned it? When students are able to cut out the background of an image and leave the, and leave the subject only, all right? So at the end of the period today, or at the end of this video today, you should be able to uh, cut out a person you admire, remove the background, save, as a save a file, upload to Google Drive, and submit the PSD on Canvas. With extra time, of course, there's Q&A and so on and so forth. So I'm preparing you for another project, which is the One Minute Me project, so you're creating a thumbnail for that. Okay, so right now you're not creating a thumbnail, you're just learning how to start the process of creating a thumbnail with a cutout of a person. So the first thing here is we're going to create a new folder in your unit 2 folder, call that the thumbnail project. So you go into your Google Drive, you go into your digital photography and filmmaking 1-2, go into unit 2, create this folder right here. So click new, click folder, and then type it. And then you'll have this right here because that's what you're going to put your file in. And then you are going to go to uh, read the agenda again. <laughs> and then we're going to create a blank canvas screen, full HD, 1920 by 1080, 72 DPI. So I'm going to go to photop.com. I'm going to file, new. And then I'm going to name this background cutout. Okay, the name is going to be background cutout. The width, uh, this is going to be a template. So you're going to have to click on screen and then click on full HD and then the template will pop up like this and the only other thing you have to change is that the background will be transparent and then click on create and then you have a brand new background and the next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna go download a picture of somebody you admire like Mr. Beast right here no I'm just joking um, anybody really musician artist whatever just go find somebody you admire parents maybe or you know Mr. Hang <laughs> joking all right so I am going to use an image of myself because I just I'm not vain or anything it's just it's easily accessible to me and I have uh, three files here that I'm going to choose from and I want to give you an, an idea of what type of uh, file you want to choose to be able to um, use so download it and then you're gonna click on open it should be in your download folder somewhere I already are downloaded my pictures so I'm going to choose this one. I have me, a student, and somebody she's kind of babysitting. All right, so here, me, a student. It was like we just ran into each other years ago. Uh, it's a former student. And then um, this one, I, I'm choosing this one because of the, uh, the way it's going to be hard to cut out. If I choose this next picture right here of just myself and the background here is Long Beach State, it's going to be really easy for me to cut myself out, so I want to challenge myself a little bit and see you and show you the struggles of what happens when you cut out something like this versus this. And then the easiest cutout would be like a green screen, a blue screen, a white screen, a black screen, and you know, it's, it's going to be really easy to do. And this is going to be a little bit later for the next lesson. All right. So uh, I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to open. And then what's going to happen here is I'm going to click the move tool and I'm going to click and drag. There's a better way of doing this, but I just want you to get used to clicking and dragging. And I'm going to place it right here. All right. And I'm going to drag it down just a little bit. It fits perfectly nicely. And if yours don't fit perfectly nicely, what you can do is you can go to file. I mean, go to edit, go to uh, free transform, click on that. And then of course you can uh, hold down shift. Do not do not just click and drag like this because it looks really ugly and it looks, it's just not aesthetically pleasing, all right? <laughs> just hold down shift and then click and drag like that. So for me, I just want, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll cut off the forehead of the other kid right there and I'll cut off her forehead a little bit so I can see myself a little bit right here and I'll push return or click a check mark up here. All right, so now the first thing here is we are going to learn how to uh, use this rectangle and ellipse selection tool and cut out a region or a space 
to move around. Okay, so I am going to use this tool right here. This is called your rectangle selection and this is your ellipse selection. And then what you're going to do here is you can create a square by holding down shift. All right, just like shapes from before. Okay, or you can let go of shift and then it creates like this rectangular shape. All right, so that is how you create a selection that's rectangular. When you can click on the inside of this shape or selection shape and then you can move it around. But if you click on the outside, you're going to be clicking and dragging to create another one and then the old one will disappear and then on the inside you can click and move that around. Click and hold by the way. Okay and then um, the next thing I want to talk about here is how you can add. So let's say I want to add like a uh, add is up here. This one is add. So you're going to create a union and mathematically a union means a set of all things. I know I just I just had to say it. All right. <laughs> the set of all elements uh, in another element and when you Mash I'm not going to go there. All right. Uh, so I'm going to click and drag here in the corner from her arm, and I'm going to get the clip of this, this corner of this rectangle right here, and the union or the combination or the combining of these two is what's left over, like that. See how there's an interesting selection now where I can move. Oh, wait. I don't want to add that. I'll click on uh, this again. And then I'll be able to come here and move the shape around. Now it's a much more interesting shape of a selection before. And I can go into my um, ellipse tool and I can hold down shift. I want to make a circle and I want to, well, I don't want to, okay, I want it to add. So I need to click on this and I'll be able to add that circle. So I click and drag, hold down shift and I'll be able to add that circle on top. Now what if I want to subtract something? I go right here. This is uh, subtracting whatever is the intersection between what you're drawing and what was on there before. So I'm going to do an ellipse this time and watch me cut in right there up down to my eyebrow. See how it's this is indented in now? I am subtracting what was overlapping. That's what happened. Okay? And then I have this thing called the intersection where if I just want, I'll, I'll do rectangle, okay, instead of a circle. I want this interesting shape up here, all right? And what's going to happen here is whatever is intersected between the original, the old one, and this new one that I'm creating, this new selection, it is going to get left behind. The intersection is going to get left behind. Oh, I didn't select that. I'll do that. I'll redo that. I have to select this. I keep forgetting that the ellipse has its own and the rectangle has its own. So one more time, I'm going to demonstrate that it is going to stay behind. The intersection is going to stay behind. Okay, you see this intersection right here? This bottom part got cut off. That. And I can click on this. That is left behind and I can move this interesting selection around. Now, what's interesting is if I use the move tool, Watch what happens. Oh snap! It gets cut out! Dizzam! Okay? So that is how you cut out and just push delete and remove whatever I want to remove. I'm going to undo that. Command Z, Command Z. And then I'm going to do this thing called inverse. Okay? I know it's like third down the list, but I'm going to talk about inverse. Inverse select is this. Right now, the inside is what gets delete when I push delete or I use the move tool and I move it around. Okay, but when I do inverse, so I go to select and I click on inverse. What happened is you see this marching ant right here that wasn't there before. All right, whatever is on the outside of that interesting cutout selection is gonna get moved or deleted. So when I click on delete, bam! I just delete whatever's in the background, just my eyeball and her finger and her lip ring and stuff like that, right? And so what happens here is you are selecting the outside of what's not inside that shape or the inverse. So if you get math, you would understand inverse pretty well. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna Command Z that and I'm gonna use the Move tool. So I'm gonna just move it around here so you can you know, see this thing kind of like tripping out here, okay? So I'll Command Z that again. That is how you can just move that background. 
call it the background, but it's technically not the background right now. But I hope you get the point. Um, I want you to play around, select the rectangle or select the ellipse. Mess, click on these and just mess around for the next five minutes. But I'm going to keep on going with the lesson because I have to try to finish this. And I love how cars just drive by my house. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on here to uh, the next tool, which is the lasso tool. Okay, the lasso tool. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to deselect first. I'm, when I click on deselect, everything that was selected, the selection is removed. That's what deselect does. So I'm going to go to the lasso selection tool and I'm going to cut myself out by click drag around my head, around my arm, and around this part right here. And this is what I'm going to cut out by closing the circle or closing the, the end path of the selection with the opening path. So what happens here is I can push delete and delete myself or I can invert select inverse and then see the marching ants on the outside right now click on delete and whatever is not me or whatever wasn't selected on the inside gets deleted so that is a quick way of doing that and of course you can mess around with all this stuff here as well oh snap i forgot <laughs> i forgot i forgot i gotta go back okay so with the rectangle and the uh ellipse tool you can do this too fill select with color so what I'm going to do here is I can actually command Z and I'm going to fill myself with a certain color here. It can, you can use it with this as well. Okay. So the fill, go to edit, go to fill, and then you can choose a foreground, background, or custom. I want custom and I want my favorite color red and I'm going to click OK. And then you can do blend mode normal or you can mess around with all these different blend modes. It's just something you just need to experiment with. I'm not going to explain everything here. Okay, so experiment, and then uh, you can change the opacity. I'm going to talk opacity in a little bit, but let me just dump red all over myself. Okay, all right, I take that back. I dumped red in the background because remember the layer was inverted. So if I come come back and invert this again, and I'll come back to myself here, and if I go to edit, fill, and then I go to uh, oh everything's already set, and I click OK. Remember, I'm selecting myself now, not what's outside of myself. I'm gonna dump red all over myself. So, you know, this is how you can quickly create a silhouette that's not like super perfect cut or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna Command Z that. Now, let me talk about this thing um, called opacity. So when you fill and you fill opacity, opacity just means how much of it is gonna be transparent, how much of this red is gonna be transparent. So I can see through the red down to the bottom and I'm gonna make myself look a little pinkish, okay? So I'm going to go to around like, oh, I don't know, 30, all right? So at first I was full red, but opacity down to 30 and not 100. I'm going to see myself a little pink because I'm, I'm see-throughing that red, okay? Or baking it more transparent, that red. Look, see how I'm a little bit more pink? All right, so you can just mess around with this stuff all day long, okay? And then uh, I want to explain feathering, all right? So feathering is uh, this. I'll go back to this, this, this shape. I'll deselect here. I'll go back to the uh, circle. I'll go back to the rectangle. All right, feathering does this. It basically, um, in the middle, it'll be extremely dark with that color, less see-through. And as you move outward, you're gonna be more see-through. So when you do this with a rectangle, it'll end up being a circle. So when you go feather, and I go to 100% feather, and I do a rectangle, all right, why is it looking like an oval or an um, ellipse? It's because it, it did have corners, all right? But what happens is that center part gets seen the most, and then as it spreads out, as, 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 as you go towards the outside border of this, this rectangle, it becomes more translucent or transparent, okay? Because the effect... The opacity is being affected, all right? As you can see in my notes here, the opacity is being affected, okay? So watch, when I dump color in here, so fill, I mean, uh, edit, fill color, let's go red again, and I'll go to opacity 100, okay? Ah, what's going on? Okay, the opacity is going to be 100, but watch, as it feathers outward, you see this? 100% in the middle or so, and then as it feathers outward, it gets less, it gets more and more transparent, OK? 
okay? And it gets more and more soft as well, all right? So that is how I'm gonna explain um, feathering because I wanna move on. So there are some, some feathering to help make the edges less harsh, okay? The edges will be less harsh, all right? Uh, lasso tool, let's go back to the lasso tool. So we did the, command Z here. Okay, so we did the basic lasso tool, click, drag, around. Polygonal tool are straight lines, like for example. So this is me just clicking, clicking, clicking. Unlike the lasso tool where you click, hold, drag around, this one is just clicking, 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 and you create straight lines around whatever you're trying to select to cut out. Okay? I'm just clicking, clicking, and I'll come over here, and I'll click right here, and I'll come over here, and I'll click right there, and bam, I have a selection that is more like edgy, okay? And then I am going to click delete, and I will delete myself out of there, command Z, or I can uh, go to inverse, and I select the outside of myself now, click delete, and I will remove what's ever in the background, okay? So that's another way to cut out a person. It looks kind of edgy, but you get the point, all right? Uh, polygonal, right? Polygon shape with a bunch of sides, yeah? So this happens to be a a bunch of sides. <laughs> I don't know the name of the shape. I didn't count how many times I clicked, all right? So that is polygonal and magnetic is, I think magnetic is the most interesting one because it's gonna, it's gonna give you a lot of trouble. So I'll do Command Z here and I'll deselect. All right, so what the magnetic tool does uh, the magnetic selection tool is if I click on the corner right here and I just I'm gonna zoom in here okay I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag myself over here and then what happens here is I work myself I click once and I'm just dragging I'm not dragging I'm just like moving my mouse around to let this magnetic tool know a hey, find the edges and drop a bunch of points so you can help me cut myself out here see how it's just dropping points for me Okay, and I'm going around my hair. So it notices that th there's a difference between these colors and there's contrast. So there's a, a light side and a dark side, so it knows exactly where to kind of drop, not exactly, but it kind of drops where it thinks is the correct edge. And this is where it's gonna get tricky because her hair and my hair are roughly the same color. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try and try and, you know, it's just a bunch of math going on because these numbers have color value. Oh my goodness, I sound like such a nerd when I said that. But anyways, that, that is the correct terminology, and I try not to be a nerd, but I am a nerd. So, but nerds are cool though, so don't hate me. All right, and then I'm, see, I'm just going, oh no, it doesn't know, I'll just click there, oh yes, and then I'll put a dot there, and I'll just go around in circles right here. And, and really, this is just a matter of just like taking your time and letting it drop the right dot to the right place. I'm not gonna do a perfect thing here, I just wanna prove a point. Okay, see how it's like understanding where the edge is? All right, now here's where it gets crazy. Oh, and there's no edge. So I'm gonna click there, I'll come over here. Oh no. Stop it. Stop it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna click here and just finish this. That's one of the problems with the uh, uh, magnetic tool, magnetic selection tool. So this is good enough if I delete right here, see how this stuff is left over. So that's just another way of cutting something out that has really interesting edges. Um, but when you don't have that contrast, between like light and dark, it, it it get a little bit confused because it's like on the edge here and it's, all it sees is dark, it doesn't see light. So it's it's confused and it's hard to cut down here. All right, so that's a drawback to this tool, but there are always pros and cons to each tool. Whichever tool you use is heavily dependent on what you have as what you're trying to cut out, okay? All right, so at that point right there, I would give you about five minutes to play around with this tool, mess around with it, okay? And then I'm going to move on here to the next tool, which is called the Quick Selection Tool. So the Quick Selection Tool, I'll do uh, Command D. Command D is actually uh, deselect. If you go here, select. If you look here, it says Command D or Control D on Windows. You deselect, shortcut. All right, so Object Select. Ooh, it's gonna have such a hard time. All right, so I want this thing, I want this tool to select just me. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click and drag and I'm gonna to try to help this, have this thing target my face. So I'm hoping it'll get my face and not her face. Oh, it almost got everything on my face, but I want my hair, I want, you know what I mean? So if it was the other thing, which is, uh, let's say I have, uh, 
Okay, let me just go down here. If I had this, let's see, uh, thumbnail. If I had this image, it would be so much easier to cut out. But I don't. I have something that's a little bit more challenging to cut out. So the tool is not best suited for this, but basically what happens is if you have like a nice same background and then the subject is a different color from the background, it's really easy for this tool to figure it out. Okay? But unfortunately, it doesn't in this case. All right? And so the next thing I want to do here is I want to go to this quick selection tool. And the quick selection tool, all you do is this. You click on where you want it to select and you just drag. Okay? So I'm just dragging here. And I'm going to zoom out here because I don't know exactly what it's like. Oh, snap. It selected all this stuff here. I don't want all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this minus sign by clicking it or just hold option all right, or alt. And I'm going to click on the outside. So I'm going to subtract so that way it gets close to my hair and my shoulder and all that. So I'm going to click and drag. See that? See how? Oh, snap. Look at that. It's going around my head. Well, I don't want her head. I just want my hair. Okay. So now it's subtracting her, but it's subtracting my hair as well. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to keep going with it. Now I let go of alt. Okay, I let go of alt because I want to select now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click around here so it kind of understands. Oh, you want that guy. You don't want her. You just want this person. Okay. So it's kind of smart enough to figure it out. But see, the edges here are not perfect. That's okay. I'm just, I'm just showing you how this tool works. Okay, so I'm going to click right here. See, oh, snap. I, I selected all this stuff down here. I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Option or Alt. And I'm going to click this area to remove all this stuff here that's being selected. Okay. And I want it closer to my arm. Let go of Alt. There. I need to get my face. Oh, snap. It went back and select that again. And I'll have to hold Alt and subtract that. Okay. All right. Oh, snap. That was not good. I'll do Command Z. This was a decent one right here. Okay. This was a decent one. I'll hold Alt. Because I want to remove that. I want to remove this. I want to remove this. But I want this. All this right here I want. So I'm just clicking and dragging. Alright, I'll do a, I'll make it bigger. I'll do plus. I'll do bracket key. How do you make this bigger? Bracket key. Right bracket. Okay. All right, I can sit here and do this all day long. All right, so that's a good enough cutout, right? So I push delete. Look, I delete myself, okay? Command Z to bring myself back. All right, so just keep doing, see? Look, I'm gonna zoom in here. All right, so I have this spot right here. I'm do left bracket key. And then I'm gonna just click right here. Watch, it's gonna figure out like, oh, I'm gonna hold alt here. Oh, Command Z. I need to hold alt and it'll try to figure out where the end of my hair is. See that? It kind of figured out where the end of my hair is. And I need I want to get this part out of my shoulder right here. I just want to move that, remove that, hold alt, and then just drag around. Okay? So you can do this all day long, but I just wanted to understand how to remove some selection and how to add some selection based on just clicking uh based on holding down alt and then dragging your mouse around and clicking around the image. Okay? So if I wanted to delete the background, once again, I go to select inverse and I click delete and I'll delete whatever is on the outside of me. Not a bad cutout. It's, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not a whole, you know. But you get the point, all right? And then I'll do Command Z here. And the last tool I want to show you is this thing called the magic wand. The magic wand does this. I'll do Command D to deselect. And then the magic wand does this. It gets close to a cluster of colors. All right. So let's say I just want my eyeball here. I click on that and it, it, it gets close to all these clusters of dark colors. So if I want to add more, go to the add button right there. And I just keep clicking around. See how it adds more to the selection. Okay but it's a, a localized selection. I'm just gonna keep clicking here and hopefully just get that eyeball only. All right, so that's what the 
magic wand is for is for understanding a specific color within that clustered area. But if I click on my like my cheek right here, watch this, watch what happens. I click on my cheek, bam, it selects like this large area because these color these colors are so similar that it thinks, oh, you want me to select all those colors? I got you, I got you. No, not really. I want to select all that. <laughs> so if you want to subtract, you can just like you know just click on here and this will subtract. If you want to intersect, let's say I click like right here. All right, well, nothing happened because there was no intersection. <laughs> so you can mess around with this stuff all day long, but that's how the tools work and different tools have different use and they all have pros and cons. One of them might suck for one thing, but it's really good for something else, okay? So again, going back to what I would like for you to have done today is to cut out someone you admire cut out their background I want you to save it as a PSD and I want you to upload it to uh, Google Drive so take it to Google Drive upload it into your thumbnail project folder and then what you're gonna do is I might as well do it huh okay I might as well just do it alright so I'm gonna go here and I'm going to zoom out command zero and I'm going to go back and uh, do my command Z all the way back hopefully Oh crap. All right, I'll just do a quick select real quick. So I'll just do a quick select, all right, of myself right there. It kind of remembered what I did last time. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to cut my, invert this. It's not going to be the perfect cutout. And then push delete. I'm going to cut her out, okay? And I'm going to save this as a PSD. Save as PSD. And so it saved it as a PSD and it named this if I go to my downloads, oh, here's my downloads right here, okay? If I go to my downloads, and then I can go to, um, it was background cutout, okay. So here's the background cutout of myself, and I'm gonna take it to Google Drive, and I'm going to drag and drop it into my Google Drive, okay? Once this is uploaded, I click, I right click, I go to get, link do not type in my email or submit this through Google Drive through selecting Google Drive copy this link make sure anyone with link can see this do not put Long Beach Unified School District it's tripping for some reason and then I'm gonna click OK take it to canvas go to your class let's say you're in my first period class and then you're going to go to your assignments alright or the module here and then you are going to scroll down to background cutout and then you are going to have a way to submit this link. Okay? So, thank you very much for watching. And um, again, this, this, is a, this is something I do extra for you. So I hope that for those of you who are watching, drop a thank you down below <laughs> because it's really, you know, motivating for me. All right, anyways, um, just leave a thank you. And uh, don't forget that if you want to know how I want to know what type of equipment I use, links in the descriptions down below. Anything you purchase through those links will help me improve my classroom by replacing broken equipment and stuff like that. And um, thank you very much for watching. That's about it. Get your hands ready. You know how we say goodbye. So rock, paper, peace. Let's hang out again in the next video.